Hey guys, it's me, Aegis Room from Four. Today, guys, we're gonna recap with you guys a emphatic win for the USA. USA have officially they have officially won in this game. I know you were waiting. Hold up, you were gonna say qualified? Nope, I couldn't say qualify yet because we have almost qualified, ninety nine point nine percent. And basically, it would take a six-goal loss to Costa Rica for us to not be in Qatar. And we're, we're going to get a top-four spot anyway. So we're, we're like, even at the worst-case scenario, we would go through the playoffs. So we're not going to get eliminated quite directly. you know. But anyways, back to this game. I look at the lineup that Greg put out for this game, and you got to come in, Greg. He put out a very, very strong 11. And I think this is the 11 that we needed to see. You know, Zach Stefan in goal, Anthony Robinson, Miles Robinson, Zimmerman, Shaq Moore, Luca De La Torre, Todd Adams, Yunus Musa, Pulisic, Ferreira, and Ariola. And when you see this 11, I was mostly satisfied. Mostly satisfied. I was really happy that Greg started Luca De La Torre. I thought that was a very, very good decision and a very good idea. Because for me, Luca De La Torre is someone that I feel can give that energeticness in the midfield and give you that creative spark. Obviously, I was very happy. I was happy that uh, Jesus Ferreira started. I think he needed to get some minutes. And for Ariola, I think for him to start this game, I thought that was a big call to make. I didn't like the call at the time, but I can understand why he did it because, like I said, he didn't want to rush uh, Reyna into the game. And you look at the team that Panama put out. They put out a pretty decent team. You got Blackburn that's there, Davis, you know, Medjaya. But you can see how disorganized this uh, Panama team were defensively. Defensively, they were a bit all over the place. Uh, They were committing so many fouls. They were very dangerous, made a lot of dangerous fouls. And that's what led to their downfall. And you look at that first goal that was the first penalty that was given, you know, um, it was a big chance for Christian Pulisic. You know, Walker Zimmerman was taken down inside the box. I believe it was Godet that took him down. Um, and he basically, um, actually, let me see right here what it says right here. Yeah, so as you guys can see, let me actually put this right here. It's a lot easier to know. Um, so you guys can see the first, let's talk about the game, right? So the first real opportunity came was the um Panama started better. I think they had the first early chance there. Um great say a good save from Stefan. And then obviously Christian Pulisic had a good chance there. Um but it was blocked. And uh, then um came the penalty. You know, uh Walker Zimmerman draws a fa- foul in the penalty area and a penalty was given. Penalty conceded by Godoy after a foul in the penalty area. For me this was a clear penalty. And obviously, Christian Pulisic stepped up and he scored the penalty to make it 1-0. And at this point, I was buzzing. I was going insane. It was a huge penalty that we needed. And it was a great goal way to start the scoring. Christian Pulisic, you know. Um, and then a few minutes later, and this, a few minutes later, um, Ariola gets a... a sit, uh, Anthony Robinson puts a great cross into the box for Ariola to head it in to make it two goals to nil. And then the third goal came from another uh, great 1-2 there with Jesus Ferreira. Um, great assist from Ariola on the right, and has this Ferreira scores to make it three goals to nil. And at this point, I knew the game was over. Once we scored the third goal in quick succession, I knew the game was over. And then Godoy got a yellow card there um, for another penalty. This one, I, w- I would say, is a bit more soft, you can say, but I can understand. And then uh, Blackburn got a yellow card, I believe, for dissent. Um, and then Christian Pulisic scored. And uh, this one was actually a bit closer this one, you could argue that Christian Pulisic kind of got fortunate to score the penalty because the keeper almost saved it. But nonetheless, it was four goals to nil at, a ha- um, at halftime. The second half was kind of a snooze fest, I'll be honest with you guys. Um, there was seven minutes at added time, obviously, because of the two penalty decisions and everything like that. And you look at the chance that Giorena had just coming off the bench. Huge chance indeed. Um, he should have scored that chance, man. Should have scored that. Um, great assist from Luca De La Torre there. And then... Um, Eunice Musa, uh, Kellen Acosta came on. Uh, that Giorena got a foul there. And, you know, like I said, Panama continued to do. The Panama also made a triple change of theirs in halftime. Um, Eric Davis got a yellow card there, as you guys can see. And um, it was a bad foul. And then Christian Pulisic scored. Aaron Long, Miles Robinson came off. Aaron Long came on, obviously, because I think Greg wanted to make sure the players don't get um, yellow uh, suspended for the Costa Rica game. Um, and then obviously Christian Pulisic scores. It was a great assist from Anthony Robinson. What a cross that was. It was a nice, a nice one too with, um, Anthony Robinson there. And, um, yeah. And then the, the last goal came from Godoy. Basically it was a, a free kick into the box and Godoy scores to redeem himself. But as I said for USA, as good as this win is, don't get me wrong. I love the fact that we won this game. We have to make things clear. 
Panama were very poor. Defensively, they were a bit all over the place. And when it was the second half, guys, we lacked control of the game. We lacked control of the game. And that is something that we needed to do is that I can understand why we eased off the second half because obviously we're 4-0 up. I mean, I mean the game is practically over. Obviously, we know Panama were going to make a comeback. But like I said, we needed to have better control of the game. And that is something I feel like we need to instill, right? And that we have to make sure we still stay ruthless, right? Because let's be real, guys. If Panama weren't that bad defensively, this could have been a closer game. You know, and we were. I was saying in my preview coming into this that Panama had one of the worst defenses. Panama conceded 15 goals. You know, and with this defeat, guys, Panama will not be in the World Cup, guys. They're officially eliminated. They will finish in fifth place. Um, they cannot jump ahead of Costa Rica. Costa Rica have won today. The max that Panama can get is 21 points. They're not qualifying to Qatar, guys. And um, the top four will remain the same. Obviously, as I said, um, it's going to be interesting to see how that all pans out. And like I said, for the U.S., I think it was a great performance. Obviously, Christian Pulisic was man of the match, got three goals. Five shots and D was a very good player. I think today he looked really, really lively. And I think he needed this performance just before the qualifiers were over. Jesus Ferrer, I thought, had a good game as well. FC Dallas center forward, he was decent. Ariel, I thought, was okay. You know, got the header there, got the nice goal. But obviously, didn't really, uh, wasn't really that amazing. Um, Tyler Adams still was good, you know, on the day. You know, accurate passes, key passes. And I think for me, Tyler Adams is such a crucial player. Luca De La Torre, I thought, was a good player in the day. Despite not getting an assist, he was still very good. And I think it shows how he should be our next guy. Yunus Musa, I thought, was decent on the day. Was okay on the day. Didn't really do much. Um, other than, obviously, I think Shaq Moore had a good game. Um, had a decent game. Zimmerman, I thought, had a good game as well. Overall, I think is one of our best center backs. Miles Robinson, I thought, had a decent game as well. And then, obviously, Anthony Robinson had a good game. And Stefan was probably one of the worst players today. Didn't really do much, in my opinion. And, yeah, man, for Stefan, man, not very good indeed. As for Mejia, I didn't have a good game whatsoever. So, like I said, guys, for the USA, I think for me this is a great, great win. And I think it shows what we can do, right? But as I said before, guys, we still have to control games better. Because I'm looking at the stats right here, guys, possession-wise. We actually had 40% possession. 40% possession. Panama had 60% possession. Hold up, is this stat right? Let me go check, because this does seem a bit odd. I, I wanted to check if this is actually true. So let me go search on Google if this is correct, because that does seem a bit odd. So, yes, guys, it is actually correct. It was correct, you know. And that is a bit weird, because generally speaking, guys, when you see the stats, generally when you look at the score, like, wow. And it shows how much we were effective we were. We were very clinical in the day. We had 15 shots, four big chances. But at the end of the day, guys, Panama out-possessed us. And that is a bit worrying. A bit worrying. And considering we were playing at home, that is a bit worrying to see us getting out-possessed at home. Obviously, it didn't really mean much in the end because we still won. But my point here is that it's a bit it's a bit difficult to read into this match because, like I said, Panama weren't very good on the day. And obviously, we'll play, play much sterner t teams in the World Cup, obviously, which the draw will happen on Friday. Of course, you guys know I'll be doing a live draw watch-along for that. It will be very, very interesting indeed. Um, but as I said before, guys, for the USA, it's a good win. It's a great win indeed, but as I said, there's still a lot of things to work on. You know, like I said, I think for Greg Berhalter, I think he needs to understand is that we need we gotta bet we gotta control the second half better because the second half, man, Panama looked really good. Panama looked decent. They had some good opportunities. And had they been a bit more clinical, they could have honestly reduced this game. Because I remember there was a big scramble. I believe it was early in the first half. I kind of missed it. I forgot which exactly it was, but it was actually before we scored the second goal. And they could have easily, like, had things gone a bit differently with the penalties and everything like that. This could have been a very different game. So, like I said, I'm not saying I'm not happy with the win. Of course, I am. But I'm just saying is that it's not all positives. There are some negatives to take away from this display. And the fact that we got out-possessed at home is a bit worrying, in my opinion. And we actually had, they actually had better pass accuracy, guys. And so that's a bit disappointing indeed. But nonetheless, guys, it was a good win indeed. And I'm happy with the win. And we now move on to a game against Costa Rica. And like I said, guys, everything to play for. Obviously, with that game, there's not really much to play for. But we still have to take the game seriously because, like I said, Costa Rica can still mathematically still qualify if they beat us by a huge margin, which I believe they have to win by six goals. So now let me go ahead and double check that right now for you guys. Let's just go ahead and double check that right now. So as you guys can see the table right now. So, yes, you guys can see right here. So if, yeah, like I said, for Costa Rica, they're on 22 points. So, yes, they would have to win basically by, 
a 12 goal margin. Actually, 11 goal margin would be enough. In 11 goal margin. It, it, it's just very, very difficult to see that happening. And we're almost, I mean almost assured a spot in the World Cup. So like I said before, guys, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy the video, guys. Comment down below your thoughts. Uh, subscribe if you're new around here. Like this video if you did enjoy. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.